And now for something completely different. Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back. So today um, I've got two new little kits that I'm going to share and use today just for a bit of fun. Um, I haven't, well I'm not going to be doing an art journal page as such, but I am going to be creating a brand new little mini journal that I can work in if the mood kind of like takes me. Um, it's only a small journal. So these are the covers, um, the four and a half inch by four and a half inch. So they're kind of cute. Um, but there's also a little set of um, wooden hull reinforcers. Don't really need them because the covers are wood. But I just thought that they'd make a nice little bit of extra decoration and um, dimension to the, the kit. So both of these little kits are on the website now if you're interested. There are there are links in the, 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 the doobie-doo below. Um, three millimetre thick, so 3000 micron wooden covers very very strong perfect for painting on and all the rest of it the other little set is a brand new little accessory set that i've created and um, not necessarily for this this was a kind of porthole set that i was playing with as a kind of picture frame um, and i just happened to place one on top of the other and it's a perfect size so i just thought Do you know what it'd look really really cute to do the journal and to accessorize it with the porthole set and I, what I thought was I'd use the porthole these three pieces are the dimensions for the porthole there and um, there's obviously a starfish a little ship's wheel a really really little cute crab and two little kissing uh, seahorses look so I thought the front cover would look really nice if I dropped the seahorses into the porthole and on the back of the journal do a kind of little cluster collage just in the corner of the journal just to give it a little bit of interest on the back so that's pretty much what I'm going to try and do today but obviously they're all wood I'm just going to paint today that's going to be the fun bit so I'm going to paint and stencil and that's really going to be it um so we'll start off with the journal covers like I said the um the Accessory set is on the website as well at the moment. It will come in a carrier sheet. I'll put a picture of it on the screen now so you can see what I mean. It's just for transportation and all you have to do is when you get it is just very gently pop it out with your fingers. Um, very, very simple and easy to do. Um, so that is called the All At Sea kit. The All At Sea set. So let me grab my paint mat and then so what I need to do, so there's, they're going to be my front and back covers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint them a kind of mottled bluish kind of colour on both sides. I'm going to paint both front and back. So let me grab my paint and then I'll be right back. Right, so I've gone through most of my paint collections. Now I've just pulled out four different blue colours, two darker, two lighter. So in the Americana range, I've got Williamsburg Blue and then Peacock Teal. So that's those two. From my Indigo Blue collection, I've got Park Lane and Townhouse Teal, which aren't a million miles away from each other. So very, very kind of similar colours. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm not even going to gesso the wood don't really need to if you're adding acrylic directly on top you don't necessarily need to gesso so let's start with one first I'm going to do a base coat of the Williamsburg and I'm only using a short handled brush because I don't want it to interfere in the autofocus on the camera <laughs> so first layer is going to be in the Williamsburg. I'm going to do both sides the same. So this isn't going to be the most exciting first layers. So what I'll do is I will pop away into fast forward, put you some music and then you can watch as I do 
the front and back covers one side and then I'll dry off and then I'll flip them over and then I'll do the reverse sides. And I'm also going to remember to do the edges. like so. Okay, so that's number one. Off with number two. Right, side one done. Now it's time to flip over and do t'other. Okay, so the front covers have been done with that Williamsburg blue to start off with. So now I'm going to come in with oh, this most lovely kind of townhouse teal that we've got from Indigo Blue. I'll just wipe off my brush. Just grab some of that and then just drop that onto the paint mat, which you notice I have cleaned. And then I'm just going to grab a piece of sponge, load it up, and then I'm just going to start sponging randomly all over the cover. Just give it a nice little bit of variation. I'm going lightly in some areas, heavier in others. There, maybe. Okay, that's one side, and now I'm going to do the other. Just a little bit of fun, this one. I'm just lightly going over in some places, like I said, and heavier in others. Just giving that background some kind of texture. There we go. Right, I'm going to dry those off and then I'm going to flip them over and then do the other side. Okay, both of the covers are done both sides now. Which I think look really cool, uh, really, really cute. So what I'm going to do is I've got my new sized Roundels stencil. So I'm going to just add a little bit of a kind of bubbly texture through the stencil, just with another piece of sponge. Take it directly this time. I don't really want a huge amount. So I'm just going to hold it down and then just lightly go through the stencil. Just pouncing up and down again, just to kind of give it that gritty, grainy texture. If I want it more kind of flat, I'd rub, but I don't. I just want to keep that kind of grainy texture just going all the way across. And I'm going just a little bit heavier in some areas, just to give it that bit of variation in texture. There we go. 
right the way down to the bottom. I'd even just do a couple of stragglers up there. Uh, maybe one or two there. Just for a bit of fun. Right. <laughs> right, I'm going to do the same to the back. I'm not going to do the inside. So that is now going to become my front cover. And I'll do the same to the back. But this time I'm going to spin the stencil around. Get some more white paint. Actually, I think what I'll do, grab a new brush. There we go. Just to lift some of that white out. That's better. Load up that brush. Not the brush, the sponge, the spongy. I'm just gonna got my finger in it then. Yeah, typical. Right, just hold the stencil down. Corner to corner, I think. And I've actually matched up the whole. I don't know what happened there with the camera. <laughs> it just seemed to go off. It's not charged. Well, it doesn't need charging or anything, but hey ho, these things happen. Right, okay, on with what I was doing. So, as I was saying, I've matched up the hole with the hole in the wood with the stencil. Not for any particular reason other than I can. I just thought it was, like I said, a bit of fun this morning. Right, so let's lift that off. Yay, love it. So we go that way, and then we go that way on the front cover. Excellent. Let's get that dried, get the stencil cleaned off, and then I'll be right back. All right, so they're now dry. So the next thing, I'm going to put a clear coat of gloss Mod Podge. Mod Podge. Us Brits can't say Mod Podge, we say Mod Podge. Right, so, and I'm literally just going to apply this on kind of liberally, just to give it a little bit of a shiny coat. A little bit of a varnish layer if you like, just to seal that colour in. And I will do the inside cover as well. So I'll go off and do that and I'll join with you when we're all dry. And then we'll make a start on just decorating these little hole reinforcers. So I'll be right back. Right, so they're now dry. Inside cover is all done. I've decided I'm going to have this one as the front cover and that's going to be the back. So what I need to do first <coughs> is to get these hole reinforcers painted. So I'll put the covers to one side just to kind of finish drying off 100%, but also um, just to cool down a bit as well, because I did use the heat gun. So for this, I'm going to use a metallic paint. So I'll just go and sort that out. By that I mean find it, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so now I've got my life sorted out. I've got the four hole reinforcers, but also I'm bringing in that middle layer from the porthole that I also want to paint the same colour as these two, the four hole reinforcers. So I've got some um, Indigo Blue Brass Monkey, which is a brass coloured metallic paint. So I'm just going to take some of that, splodge it onto my paint mat, like so. But instead of painting it on, I'm going to spounce it on. I'm going to use one of the Tim Holtz um, 
distress inkers just to load it up with paint move that brush out of the way just stick it in my pot over there that's it and then i'm just going to work it into the sponge and then spouse and that's going to give me a nice kind of hammered finish even finish where you won't be able to see any brush marks Love it. So I'll do the same, actually I could do with a bit more paint actually. This is why I didn't clean the brush straight away. Just add a bit more of that paint on the mat there. Load it back up again. These little sponges, the Tim Holtz, well actually I don't know whether these are Tim Holtz ones or whether they're a cheaper alternative to be honest, um, hold a lot of paint. I may need to hold something, hold those down with something. Let me go and grab a pokey tool or a scalpel or something. There we go. That's better. Oh, so much better. easier <laughs> I'll just go back over this with a second coat because it really doesn't take long for this stuff to dry on the wood particularly when it's not being gessoed first the wood just soaks it in and it dries really quick Okay, first set of bits done, I'll get those dried, get cleaned up, and then we'll get cracking on the next. So while we've got the metallic paints out and the sponge daubers, I'm also going to do those other two component rings um, for the porthole. So brass, not brass, copper. I'm going to do copper for this one. So let's just grab a, another brush. That'll do. So we'll start off with brass layer, not brass layer, copper. I keep saying brass, it's not it's copper. So copper. Then we'll have the brass on the top, and then we'll have another layer of the copper there. So let's just load up the sponge. You'll notice there's a hole missing at that side. That's where the hinge piece goes. Hold still, little creature. Again, using the sponge or the the re like the I don't know what they really call those ink sponge, blending sponge, whatever. You do get a nice kind of even coat.
Right, let's get this dried and then I'll give it a second quick coat and then I'll join with you again once it's dry. Okay, so we're ready to start construction just on the front of the journal. That's the back, so we don't actually need to do anything apart from glue on the, um, the hole reinforcers. So to do that, I'm going to use glossy accents only because it's just quick and easy. Um, am I going to need to open the hole up again? Yeah. There we go, I should do it. I'll just test a little piece. Oh, there we go. All right, so I'm just going to put a real small amount just around the hole. Because it is kind of strong glue. And then just drop those hole reinforcers over the top. Don't worry about aligning them. I'll show you a little trick in a little while. Get them squidged in. Okay, so the easiest way to align holes like this is to get uh, either a thin paintbrush or a pencil and then just push through and that will align your holes. Just like that, just like that or, or even a, um, a pencil. Oop, that come off. <laughs> I did press that down obviously hard enough. Okay. See, if it's tapered, the better, because it will then, as, it, as you push through, it will centre itself. So if your brush handle is tapered, even better, like that one's tapered. So that's going to centre those holes. Not gonna glue, does it? That'll be okay. Right, so that one's done. The back's done, so we can pull that out of the way. Now we can bring our copper porthole in. So what might be worthwhile is actually gluing this together first before. Yeah, look at that. Doesn't that look the business? Even if I do say so myself. All right, bring that glossy accents in. Tissue a minute. All right. So I'm going to just add a very thin ring. I'm only using glossy accents because it's quick and easy and it's strong. No other reason really. Okay, so the inner ring there is just slightly smaller than the ring on the porthole. So you probably will just need to position a sticky head over, pardon the ball patch. There we go. So that should be enough. And then I'll just add a little bit of glossy accents along there, crop along there and then drop that over the top. And that is just kind of like your hinge, your faux hinge mechanism. It doesn't actually open, but that looks cool. I like it. I should like it really. 
of these little bits of fun. There we go. Right, so we'll leave that to dry for a second, and then when it's dry enough, we'll add the glue underneath and get it stuck to the front of our little journal. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so that's had a few minutes to grab. So all I'm going to do now is just put a ring. I'll put a ring on it. Haha. <laughs> Treat it like satin. Put a ring on it. Right. Drop like that, that down. That's cool, isn't it? Oh, it's dinky. I just need to get my head in shot just to make sure that it actually no, I don't. Oh, I it. like that a lot. That's cool. I'll just use my my camera just to try and even it up a bit. What's the sparkly background? What sparkly background? It's like iridescent. What, this? Yes, this. Paint. What is it? Yeah, it's just got Mod Podge. It's got a, a shiny coat oh. of um, gloss Mod Podge on it. Oh, which you've applied with a sponge dauber, I presume? No, with a brush. Oh, cool. With a brush. Nice. Cool. Now, the sponge dauber was for um, the paint. Oh, yeah. I used your technique. <laughs> All right, so we're going to leave that to dry for a minute or two, and then we will be right back. Okay, so that's had time to set. Let you into a little secret. It's not actually the same day. It's a different day now, isn't it, Ian? I couldn't possibly say. <laughs> we had guests yesterday. It was Karen's birthday. Yeah, our friend Karen came over with her husband, Steve. Um, we cooked a, a lunch. Bought her a massive, great big chocolate cake. I had a lovely time. Um, okay, so the front covers are nice and dry. Lovely kind of shiny porthole there. And obviously the hole reinforces. that. It doesn't really need the hole reinforces. It's just a bit of extra decoration and a bit of extra fun. So the next thing we're going to do, our paint mat's looking a bit worse for wear, isn't it? Partially melted. Um, so we've got our little embellishments that we're going to paint. So I think I'm going to do the same kind of technique that I did yesterday with the uh, the door bin, because I'm not going to do these with metallic paint, or am I? I don't know. I might do the the, the seahorses in a kind of metallic -y sheen, maybe green and blues. Mostly greens with a little bit of blue thrown in, the metallic blue. Um, obviously, the ship's wheel is just going to get done in a matte brown. Um, and then the crab and the starfish I'm going to do in a combination of coral colours, which I think will be rather lovely. Be nice. Yes. So let's do... There's going to be a bit of running backwards and forwards to the bathroom today because I'm going to need to clean the sponge door by between uses. I could do it for you. I could be our runner. Well, there you go, you see. I thought you were working. I am, but I'm prepared to help. <laughs> so we don't need a huge amount. So it's more of a, it says true ochre on the pot, but it's kind of like a sandy colour. Who's it from? It's the Deco Art Americana. Oh, yes. And like I said, it's just that ship's wheel. We might have to do a couple of coats. I might just add a little bit of um, distress as well, just because, just to kind of grunge it up a little bit. Not that I want it too grungy. It's not that kind of project. It's not like a vintage Tim Holtzy kind of project. It's more of a fun project. Not that Tim Holtz isn't fun, but you know what I mean. Brighter. <laughs> I'm digging myself a hole here, aren't I? Yeah. Okay, so that's the ochre done. Should it actually just have a little bit of brown in there? We don't have a metallic brown, do we? I don't think so. I don't think Indigo Blue make a metallic brown, don't they? No, I don't think so. Um, I'm just wondering why I've got matte paints in with my um metallic paints not my fault i don't think no no they don't do a metallic brown they did a bronze which is kind of like a metallic brown isn't it but i don't appear to have 
the bronze. Pheasant bronze? Yeah. I have pheasant bronze. Would you like some? Uh, would you? Of course. Because you I don't have any. Um, so is it entering off stage right? Yes, leaving stage right. Actually, stage left. <laughs> Okay, so while that's doing that, let's come in. Actually, no, let me get that dried off first. Try not to burn my fingers. So look at that. I've just painted the wood a wood colour. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> right, Ian's just dropped the, um, the pheasant bronze in front of me. Um, actually, I could do with that being washed in would you mind just yeah of course i like to go with peasant bronze yeah there's some kitchen roll on my desk if you just want to just give it a squeeze of a kitchen roll just to dry it off a little bit while you never had an assistant before oh my God. excuse the rattling noises let's give that a clean off there we go can i have the kitchen roll as well of course, there you are. Thank you. There we go. It's nice having your own little minion. Don't push it. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting you to go bottom. 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 Right. Banana. <laughs> right. Pheasant bronze. I did say I wasn't going to do this metallic. I've just changed my mind, haven't I? On the hoof. On the fly. Let's just grab some of that. It's almost like a, um, it's got red in this bronze, hasn't it? It has, hasn't it? You can just see the red tones in there. All right, so we'll use that ochre as a base then. I do with my pokey tool. The pardon the expression. How can it have gone? Oh, it's there. I don't remember tidying up yesterday. I just remember just walking away from my desk and abandoning everything. Tidy Stopped fairy. filming yesterday just as Karen arrived. Tidy fairy must have been. Yeah. There we go. Tidy fairy. Right, so that's the bronze. Yeah, I like that. That's going to work well on on the back of that journal. Got another wet wipe. Excuse the crinkly noises. All right, got two of those. to tidy up and clean it up. Right, I think the crab and the starfish, let's just move that to one side Sounds to dry. Like the, the, the crab and starfish, yes it does sound like a public house doesn't it? Or a really good little restaurant. Right, I just need to have that washed again now. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to keep doing it you know. That's no, fine. <laughs> Thank you. Just get a paint on your hands. Right, so the coral, crab and starfish. lovely kind of salmony pink colour. They call it coral. I'm calling it salmon pink. There we go. So two different shades. One lighter than t'other. So I think what I might do is just go around like the, the middles and then just pick up some on the edges of the darker. But I might do the starfish the whole dark colour and just do that with the crab. Because that's the way the whimsy's taking me today. Well, those are pretty. Yes. Coral colour. We, we like whimsy, don't we? Yeah. We like following our whimsy. Whimsy whimsy. <laughs> right, let's, let's grab. Let's load up on pink.
starfish pink. Actually, I might just put in some orange on that starfish. Oh. I've got a new metallic orange just been released from Indigo Blue. It's part of their Alice in Wonderland range. Oh, yes. Um, and I believe, sorry? Mugsy Marmalade, is it? Yeah. Oh, no, I think it's the Cheshire Cat. Cheshire Cat, yes, it is. No, a lion, it's Mad Hatter. That's the orange. Because of his fur. Mad Hatter, metallic orange. There we go. Um, so there was Queen of Hearts, wasn't there? Yeah. Um, Queen of Hearts, which was red. That's the metallic red. There was a pink, which is the Cheshire Cat. There you go, that's the Cheshire Cat one. And there was another one, the Duchess. I think I might have to reread Alice Wonderland because I don't get that one. I don't get the reference. Um, match hair, which was green. And there was another colour. Can you remember which one it was? No, Alice. Alice Blue. Alice is Blue, yes. Alice is Blue dress. So those are the six new Alice in Wonderland colours. Um, as you can see, I've already used the Mad Hatter quite a lot on the pumpkin. Remember the pumpkin with the big teeth? Oh, yes. The box. Um, I used a lot of it on that because it's a nice colour. I like that project. Yeah. Right, I'm going to mix the crab we're gonna go light and we're gonna go dark because we can this is the way you're rolling today. exactly we're doing whimsy today so let's just do that and then we'll grab some more of the dark color and come back in and do his do his claws I think this is probably a bit more of the dark when you want me to go wash here. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. I'm like, this is Doyle, Father Ted. I know. We're wanting a cup of tea, Father. If you ever get a chance to watch it in the US, watch it. It's a little bit irreverent to the Father Catholic Church, but it's very funny. <laughs> Father Ted. I love Father Ted. So funny. Um, I'm just looking to see if there's another darker kind of colour that's not too ready. What's that one? The dried clay. Yeah, it's a bit too, it's not quite there. It's, it's not, it's not doing it for me, I'm afraid. Oh, Nick has woken up. Oh, bless him. Hi, Nick, no. Oh, he's having a big stretch. Oh, look at those legs. Look at those long leggies. There we go. Just do a little bit around his claws and his legs there. That'll do. All right, is that um, starfish dried yet? Almost, might just have to give it a quick blast and then... There we go. Hold on, could I have another clean? Of course. Hello, little pumpkin boy. Thank you. Thank you. All righty then. Let me wash the handle or you're gonna end up getting it all over the place. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so let's just dry the crab off while Ian's cleaning that, and then we can get cracking on on the starfish again. It's the same clothes the wash tub you bought this week. It certainly is. There you go. Thank you. There you go. Lovely stuff. You can come again. Yeah, I've with all this hard work. <laughs> there we go. Mad Hatter. So let's just grab some of that. We're not going to need a huge amount. Just going to be little, little bits. With it being orange, all kind of, strangely enough, all kind of like citrusy colours. Orange, lime, green, yellow, all that kind of stuff. Always tend to be a bit more translucent than 
and other colours. Have you found that? Yes. Green and yellow. Yeah, citrus, citrus, citrusy colours. Yes. Yeah, that includes lemon. Lemon. It's lemon. It's lemon. Bit of Poirot thrown in there, look. Agatha Christie. You know what, I might just go all the way over. Just do a little all over, light pouncing on that starfish. Catch the edges, but leave the middle bit. You could have fun colouring these whatever colour you want, really. Yes, you could. Do a blue starfish. Why not? They'd be all different colours. Well, you them. know. Okay, I think right, what we'll do now is just have a bit of a clean up and a tidy up and a dry off and then before I do the the kissing seahorses. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. I've got Kingfisher Blue, which is a beautiful kind of tealy metallic. So just give it a quick shake. I haven't used it for a while. Before oh, you can tell I've not used it for a while, there's hardly any left in there. But the, whatever's on the lid there should be enough, I think, anyway, for what we want to do. Just give that brush a wash. Brush up, brush up, brush up. Right. the paint off my fingers and then the lime sherbet metallic green bit of a daub there there we go like i said you could have fun with these just messing about with the different kind of color combinations use what you have really all right so let's grab that lime sherbet And then we'll go all over that one there, and then we'll go over that one like so. Kind of need a little bit more. Not just enough. Just a tiny splodge more. There we go. And just flip that back around again and just give that the second coating turn that around it does dry pretty quick on the wood just fun right so while that's still wet so I can get a bit of a blend on it I'm just going to take this kingfisher blue just hold that down a little bit and then I'm going to come in on that edge there and just get that kind of blend and then do we need to wash it? No, no, it's fine. Thank you very much. Oh, I like the effect. Yeah, just ticking it around the edge. Concentrate mostly on the tail. The thin kind of thing. Thinny tail thing. Yeah. Yes. You 
much more of a, a nice kind of ombre blend effect by doing that pouncing technique. For our little kissing seahorses. Aren't they cute? So cute! Right, so let me get those dried off. I'll have a bit of a clean up and then I think we're going to be ready to just finish sticking bits together. Okay, back in a little while. Okay, so we're back. Everything's kind of dry. So now it's time to start sticking things down. So let's just add a little bit of just going to use glossy accents only for speed and ease really no real other reason so i'm going to line it up with the corner give it a little push and then the starfish just add a few bits here and there few little small blobs and then we can drop the starfish into position like so give it a wiggle and that can sit and then the crab <laughs> we'll put some on his body there and just on his claws I think I'm going to sit him just on the ship's wheel like that. Like it. All right, and then our little kissing seahorses. Hopefully got those level. There we go. And that looks really, really cute. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that for a few minutes just to, um, to kind of grab and set. And then... I'll be back just to do the finishing touches. Okay, so everything's had plenty of time to dry now. Ian said to me earlier, surely if they're under the sea, they'd all be shiny, including the starfish and the crab. So they've each had a little bit of a coat of Mod Podge just to give them a little bit of a shine. Can't really see it under these lights. There's a, there you go, a little bit of a shine. Come on. So, Last thing I want to do is just get a bit of scrap card. I've got a white pen, paint pen, and I just want to give the little crab a couple of little white dots for his eyes, only because it's cute. And also... You can't see where he's going. <laughs> you can't see where he's going. And also just give the little starfish just a little eye heat eye each. Get some more paint in that pen. I shook it up earlier and I got paint everywhere. Yeah. Splatters of paint, white paint. On my hands, across the mat. There we go. Like I said, just a little bit of fun. <laughs> okay, that shouldn't take too long to dry. So now I've got my book rings. I've also um 
got some paper that I've cut just to go with the journal. So I'm just going to slide that into the middle. And then put that over the top and grab the book ring. And then just feed that through. There we go. There's going to be a little bit of resistance because it's probably got a little bit of glue in there. There we go. And then do the top. Just open that ring a little bit further. It's just like threading a needle, really. <clears throat> That's it. Once it's in, it's in. And of course, you can put whatever size book rings in. <laughs> Well, there you go there's my little under the sea journal with a few little decollage pages in just for playing in when i'm feeling just that way inclined which i think probably it might need bigger book rings but just for the time being that'll do nicely so that's it so that's my journal complete so i hope you've enjoyed watching me use those two new sets to create this little um, whimsical journal. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. And don't forget you can access your exclusive angel-only content over on my website. There's a link in the description area below. Thank you.